Conversation is a totally alternative interview series with women who have a story or experience to share. Relationships, sex, kids, career. We're basically talking about the universal language of women. I use my oven for storage. <laughs> I can't bake in it. That's where I put like excess dishes. I started my blog when I moved to New York for a job and I wanted a place to keep all my pictures. And also, everybody had a blog spot, so I was like, well, I'm, I'm gonna get one too. I want one too. I want one too. So yeah. I started it. It became personal style, because that's what I enjoy doing, and I love fashion, I love clothes, maybe and, too much. And how have you been able to express yourself through that blog? I think, I used to have a fear of being overdressed, or people looking at you. You know, think of yourself, if you walk down the street, people think that you're for sale. I yeah. think sometimes if an attractive woman wears a pair of heels in the daytime, she can be frowned upon by other women. Like it's not appropriate to dress like that all the time. And I thought, oh, I, like, I like my clothes and I bought them to wear. I'm not gonna save them just to wear to dinner with my husband. So I started wearing them all the time. Yeah. And what do you do when someone looks at you with judgment? My new thing is to try and smile at them. Oh, how's but that going? Not well. The South, Lon <laughs> the South London in me is like, <laughs> what do you want? What are you, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Yeah. Can I help you? <gasps> I can imagine. How do you think people in America look at you as being mixed race as opposed to England? I think in England, I feel that I'm identified as being black by black people and, and by white people. Really? Yeah. Well, in where I grew up, I was just- In Brixton? Yeah. Here, I feel like I'm biracial. But do you feel like in your work that there has to be a reason for you being in a role? Do, they, do you think that they say, well, this girl has, you know, caramel skin colour and therefore there has yeah. to be a reason for that in the role? I've definitely felt that. I felt like they, I felt like, and I felt that in England as well, I won't lie. I felt like they, they wanted an ethnic minority and m perhaps it's more palatable to have, to have a mixed race girl. And especially at one that's, I'm, my mum's white and my dad's mixed race, so. Oh, wow. I'm more white than I'm black. And I think that that can be more palatable for an audience sometimes. Do you see many roles, many opportunities for actresses that have that are mixed race? Or does it? Do you feel well, like it's limiting in America? From my, from my point of view, yes, I've I haven't had a problem working here. But I know of other actresses who are mixed race who obviously haven't had the same experience. And I don't know if that's because maybe I look more Caucasian than they do, or I don't know. Have you ever had a casting couch situation? I've only, I've only ever had one experience with somebody in a position of power um, in the film world being inappropriate towards me. I won't name him. <laughs> no, don't. Don't even give him that attention. But yeah. But he was is a producer, and he had invited me through my agent to meet him for like tea, and it's it was kind of odd, but also not that odd because casting directors do general meetings all the time, right. and sometimes producers like to cast in that way as well. So I went along and he just got very drunk and very inappropriate. And I was talking about a project I was writing with a friend of mine and he asked me what she was like. And I was like, oh, she's an amazing actress. She's a great, great listener. I was saying positive things about her. And he was like, yeah, but does she And I was like, wow, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. What did you say? And I remember he was going from that meeting to meet somebody else, another actress I knew because he had told me he had another meeting after that. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to that meeting. And I went and I saw wow. her and I was like, Let's go. <laughs> we wow, left. good for you. Good for he you. He still works and he's still um, in my life to a certain degree because I told him off. But do you ever see him? Yeah, he's sober now. And has he made amends to you? Well, he hasn't given me a job. That would be, right. that would be the true amends. <laughs> that would be the ultimate <laughs> amends, wouldn't but it? You know, yeah, he's never done it since. You know, some people are afraid to speak up because they want their job, they want to be given a job more than they want to speak up. I've never suffered from that. If, in, if anything, I speak up too much. I'm always saying how I feel. I'm not shy of opinions. What is the best advice you've ever been given? My dad, it, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. And what is your biggest regret? I met my husband like two years before we finally got it together. And I think I just, I wasted two years in another relationship that wasn't the right relationship and I could have just had two more delicious years with him. What would you tell your 14-year-old self? It doesn't matter. It's fine. And, it, and everything gets better. Like, everything gets better. What is your favourite sex position? 
This <laughs> sounds boring, but missionary. I like my man to be in control. He's gonna hate that I said that, but I do. Did anyone say reverse cowgirl or any such pawn position? People say ultimatums are bad, but they can't, maybe they're not. You know, the truth is, you get to see where someone's at. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Do you think there'll ever be a day on one of my sets where someone isn't talking, we're not talking about sex or vaginas or nipples or... I had a pre-interview for something, and he said, I said vagina more than anyone else. Than anyone he's ever it's had. It's such a, a great word. Oh I my god, vagina. vagina. It's just awesome.